Yes, coming to that, uh, can you tell us what led to the breakup of NAD? Well, uh, is because it... most people blame UDP for the break. Yeah, people blame UDP for break up, for the breakup of NAD because I resigned from uh, from NAD. But in my resignation, NAD, I made it quite clear that I was resigning from NAD, the political party. But NAD, the loose alliance of political parties, UDP is committed to that. And of course, that would mean that it would be what would have would be a party-led alliance. It would not be I mean, a new political party which would sponsor the candidates for either the presidential or the national assembly elections. But what really I found uh, uh, unacceptable you know, is the fact that some people tend to think that you know, I mean, uh, others do not have any moral standards. Others cannot measure up to the best practices. Others cannot protect the rule of law and constitutionalism. I, I could not really accept that. And uh, uh, the day uh, prior to my resignation, I believe this was about 7th of February, when I tell my 7th of February, 2006, I, 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 we are given a, seven, a set of uh, criteria, seven criteria that one has to fulfill for you to be qualified to be selected as presidential candidate by NAD. Who designed those criteria? Well, and it was designed by committee. Hmm. Designed by committee. And what, what, are, what are those criteria, some of those criteria? Well, some of those criteria are that you, know, you have to be a man of uh, moral standing, you have to be uh, electable, uh, you have to be uh, you know, uh, some kind of an orator, those type of things. And uh, I went to the meeting on the 7th and I said, look, you know, I believe that I am a stumbling block to the aspirations of some members of NAD. And I uh, reminded them that uh, from inception, I had always, I've always stressed the fact that we have to be sincere and honest. We have to face realism. If there is no sincerity, there is no amount of agreement. There is no uh, I mean, number of uh, I mean, documents that one can sign that would bind us together. Sincerity and honesty, that would be the binding bond between us. I said, look, I do not accept any other criteria for selection of a NAD presidential candidate other than what is stated in the Constitution of the Gambia. This is a, I think this is a mockery. I mean, uh, it is a, a, something that is not, it is a ploy that is really intended to uh, keep us, you know, dragging this selection process. But since I'm the stumbling block, Mr. Chairman, please, here is my letter of resignation. And I resigned, and the chairman wouldn't accept my resignation. And that's because I was going to publish it. I was going to send a copy to the IEC. The chairman would not accept my resignation and wanted some negotiations. You know? But then I had, made, I had already made up my mind that even if the chairman was successful in his negotiation, I did not think that there was uh, any sincerity. I did not think that you know, there, was, uh, there was any sense of purpose amongst members. And when I, when I resigned, I think at that time, Mr. Jano was the only person whose uh, nomination was on the floor. I would have thought that a consensus would have been worked around Mr. Jallo. But instead, I understand Mr. Sala also uh, came back into the race. So, you know, the, for me... As well as Mr. Juara too. I mean. Well, well I, sub 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 I understand when Mr. Jallo, I mean, uh, uh, deferred to Mr. Sala, Mr. Juara also came in. And I, look, this just shows that really uh, there was not that degree of sincerity that was required to keep us together in NAD. And I hope that, if at all, the opportunity that STGDP and people, of course, throughout the world, 
are clamoring for presents itself to us again, you know, we will learn from those mistakes and make sure that uh, we are bound together by sincerity, by determination to give to the people of the Gambia what they want and not to give to ourselves what we want. Your party remains by far the largest opposition political party in the Gambia. But uh, votes for both yourself and the UDP had been steadily decreasing over the last three elections. How do you explain this? That is absolutely don't, don't you think uh, you should give way to a younger leadership within your party structure? I am prepared to give the leadership of the party to anybody. I am prepared to accede to any person within the UDP to be contest as presidential candidate. I'm, I'm prepared to concede that. And I have made that known, I mean, even before I mean, some uh, um, upheavals within the UDP, I had made that known that anyone who is willing to take up the leadership of the UDP is welcome to do so. After all, I did not seek leadership of the UDP. I was drafted, and I'd be quite willing to relinquish uh, the leadership position. And for that matter, presidential candidate to any person within the UDP. The decline, of course, in the votes uh, has various factors. Now, there is uh, what you call general vote apathy in the Gambia, and it is not only UDP that has been affected by the decline in votes. Even Yami, who has who won, has also been having his vote declining. So there is not decline just on UDP. But uh, you'll agree with me that uh, since 1996, several people whose names are on the register of voters, several thousands of them, have exited the Gambia. They are living in exile. All those people are Registered members of the UDP. I'll just give a typical example. Our candidate for Combo Central, Mr. Jani, he is here with his family of about 19, 15 to 19 people, and they are all registered voters. And their names are the registered voters. So <laughs> they have not voted. Yeah? So these are some of the factors that really explain for UDP's uh, uh, declining votes. In addition, of course, to the, the I have the, we cannot, uh, we cannot I mean, ignore the fact that there have been general vote happening in the country. Uh, do you genuinely believe that free and fair elections can ever take place under the rule of uh, President Jambi? Well, I don't want to be too pessimistic. Uh, I also do not want to be too optimistic. Uh, I'll just stand in the middle said that uh, I hope that uh, the officers and the commissioners at the Independent Electoral Commission will uh, be men uh, who will uh, follow the dictates of their conscience, that uh, they will be uh, men who will want to leave behind them a legacy which their children and grandchildren will be proud of. And I hope that that uh, they will be and act like the Electoral Commission in Sierra Leone, which commission did not care who was a minister, did not care who was a president or vice president. All that they cared about was that these are two candidates competing for the office of president and competing for various electoral, uh, for, for the various elective offices. So they never had any bias for any of them. I hope that our independent electoral commission will do the same.